Maintaining high email deliverability is vital. After all, what's the point of sending your email campaigns if they never even reach your target inboxes? In this video, we'll be covering how to set up SPF, DMARC, and DKIM, how to warm up your email and why you should, creating subdomains for outreach, why you should use several email accounts for your campaigns, and how to monitor and maintain your email health. So let's dive into it. Setting up SPF, DMARC, and DKIM can sound super technical, but stick with me, all it takes is a few steps that will have a massive impact on protecting your domain's reputation. So let's break it down. SPF, or Sender Policy Framework, is an email validation system designed to detect email spoofing. Email spoofing is a type of email fraud that occurs when someone sends an email using someone else's email address in an attempt to deceive the recipient. For SPF, or Sender Policy Framework, access your domain's DNS settings via your host, be it GoDaddy, Squarespace, Gmail, whatever you use. Then you're going to need to sign into your website's DNS provider. Go to the pages or whatever tab that is used to update your domain's DNS records. Some places to look include the DNS management, name server management, or advanced settings. Find your TXT records and check if your domain has an existing SPF record. Note that the SPF record starts with V equals SPF1. If your domain already has an SPF record, then you're good to go. No action needed. If you don't find an SPF record, create a TXT record with these values name, host, alias, and etc. Enter at or leave a blank. Other DNS records for your domain might indicate the correct entry. Time to live or TTL, enter 3600 or leave it at default. Value answer destination, enter V equals SPF1, etc. Note that this can take up to 48 hours to take effect. Now for DKIM, or Domain Keys Identified Mail, is a method for email senders to digitally sign emails using a cryptographic signature. This signature can be verified by recipients using the public key published in the sender's domain name system or DNS records. DKIM also allows recipients to verify that an email message was indeed sent by the claimed sender and has not been modified in transit. Setting it up means hopping into your Google Admin Console or equivalent, generating a DKIM key and planting that into your DNS as a TXT record. So start by logging into Google Admin, admin.google.com. In the navigation menu on the left hand side, go to Menu, then Apps, G Suite, then Gmail. Then you'll generate a DKIM key. Create a DNS TXT record with the DKIM key generated in the previous step. For this, you will need to go to your domain provider, GoDaddy, Squarespace, Namecheap, etc. After creating the DNS TXT record in your domain with a DKIM key, you can start authenticating. Finally, DMARC, which stands for Domain Based Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. Try saying that three times fast. It is an email authentication protocol that works by verifying that the sender of the email is who they say they are and that the email has not been tampered with. A DMARC record also allows email senders to specify what should happen if an email fails authentication. For example, whether it should be rejected or delivered to the recipient's inbox. Setting up involves creating yet another TXT record in your DNS, setting up policies that determine how your domain handles suspicious emails and deciding if you want to receive reports on that front. Sign into your website's DNS DNS provider, for our site we're using Cloudflare, find DNS management or settings. Add this TXT record to your DNS, hostname underscore DMARC, value with email, V equals DMARC1, and so on and so forth. Note that the email version will send reports to whatever email you put in there. This is totally optional, but we recommend having a no reply at domain.com email used to receive DMARC records. Here is the value without the email, value, no email, dash, V equals DMARC, so on and so forth. Now you just have to verify that all DNS settings were set up correctly here. Next topic, email warmup. Email warmup is a practice that's aimed at improving your email reputation a little bit before diving headfirst into outreach. And you should always, and I mean always, warm up your emails before starting any major campaigns as skipping this step will more than likely cause your emails to go straight into spam. Spam, 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 fake beans. There are two types of email warmup tool assistant and manual. If you have a new email or an email that hasn't been used for cold outreach before, we recommend warming it up manually. It's the practice of starting your email outreach at a very low daily target, say 10 emails or so, and slowly working your way up to 20 or 30 emails a day over the course of a couple months. We recommend not to send over 50 emails a day just from mature accounts to prevent spam issues in the long run. You can do this in Respondent by going to Account, then All Emails, and changing your daily email limit for each individual sender. Well, what about tool-assisted warmups? 
Tools like Lemwarm connect you to a network of users and emulate real conversations. To your email service providers, these exchanges look like real emails, which in turn increase your domain reputation. However, it's worth noting that Google's not fond of these automated warmups because they circumvent their spam algorithm. So in our general experience, use them as painkillers, not as vitamins, meaning only use them if you have clear indications of issues with spam for a period of one or two months and not as a preventative measure. Our next point is which email domain you should use. A common question asked is, should you use your company domain or should you create a separate domain just for outreach? Well, we say company domain with a subdomain. Why? Because if you use your main company domain and get reported as spam, the reputation of your entire domain will take a hit. Using a subdomain will decrease the damage. Unlike separate domains, subdomains keep a close relationship with your main domain, meaning you'll likely see better open and reply rates. And you can never have too many email accounts. Well, within reason. Multiple accounts let you run several campaigns at once while keeping each address's daily volume low, a juggle that keeps your email health in the green. Speaking of email health, tools like Respondent help monitor your email health by checking your DNS records, spam scores, and scanning for any blacklist shenanigans. If you do end up on a blacklist, it's a matter of reaching out and asking, nicely, to be removed. Most blacklists have contact information displayed right on their site. And that wraps up our techie session. Remember, solid foundations lead to successful outreach campaigns, and you're one step closer to building a sustainable link building machine. Now, I'll see you in the second lesson of Module 3.